my loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new hi hello my name is Loie and today I wanted to do kind of a different video in the past I have read you guys the stories that you've sent to my Loie Lane story time at gmail.com email I have like retold your stories and asked for advice from our family but today I wanted to do something a little bit different and basically react to your stories in real time. I have kind of gone through my email and picked out the first few, but really and truly, you're just gonna see me like scroll through and pick out stories as I go and react to them in real time. I thought this would be kind of fun for like a million reasons. Number one, it's such a cool way to interact with you guys. It's kind of like our own way of telling each other stories. I think that's so amazing. But also, I just wanted to kind of highlight your stories and the things that you guys have been through and it makes me feel a little bit less alone and a little bit less crazy when I know that you guys have had crazy intense paranormal stories as well. Before we get into the video, if you guys could go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you are excited about this new kind of series on my channel and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We would love to have you as part of the family. If you've done both of those things, please hit the notification bell so you never miss when I upload. So this first one is from Wendy and Wendy's video really stuck out to me just because of how well she wrote the story out. And she says, hi Louie, my name is Wendy and you can call me that in your video if you make one about me because I set up this new account to contact you for my own safety. I have a problem. When you first told us about your email, I didn't have anything to send. Whatever. It was fine. But then something happened. On Friday at school, I was with my friend Carly when she started acting strange. She wasn't talking throughout the day and didn't eat at lunch. I assumed something happened and gave her some space. On Saturday, we were set to go to the movies together. I texted her to make sure she was still up for it. No response. I texted again. No response. I texted multiple times to no avail. I drove over to her house to make sure she wasn't murdered or something. Her mother greeted me at the door and begged for my help. She told me Carly keeps saying odd things and speaking in languages from hell. I was too scared to go and see her now, but I talked her mom into an exorcism. Oh my god if this story is real like the fact that you were able to talk her mom into an exorcism that is intense and that had to be some intense stuff going on apparently that happened on sunday after church this morning carly seemed fine she was back to her normal chatty self she ate at lunch and joined the conversation a little bit into eighth period i went to use the bathroom I heard crying from the stall next to mine, but assumed there was a breakup i hadn't heard about yet while washing my hands i heard a small voice go wendy I couldn't respond. I felt like I was dying. Suddenly pain spread through my body and I couldn't see. When it stopped, I saw Carly standing over me crying. I asked what happened and all she said is, I'm not in control, help me, over and over. I ran out and went to the nurse who said I must have fallen. The rest of the day went normal and I even saw Carly who was still acting as she normally did. I'm shaken and I wanna know your thoughts. I told Carly's mom, but it scared her so much that she thinks she wants to have an exorcism tonight. Thank you so much for reading this and please help Wendy. Oh my God, Wendy, holy cow. And this was literally sent to me like days ago when I'm reading this. Like I'm reading this on April 12th and she sent this to me on April 9th. So I'm a little bit intrigued, but also terrified to know if there have been any updates to this story. Holy freaking cow, girl. Um, if this is a true story, which, oh my gosh, that is petrifying. And all I can tell you is, oh, I don't even know what to tell you. Like, that doesn't sound like a very normal um, haunting, if you can even call it that. What's weird about your email wendy is the fact that i was just thinking my friend who got possessed earlier today and i'm a little bit creeped out right now because i haven't thought about her in a long long time but i was just thinking about her today and then i saw your email and that feels so similar to kind of what happened with her except i was never caused pain i think that you know you've done the right thing you've told her mom you know that something weird happened again but be really careful and be really safe and possibly keep your distance if there is physical pain being inflicted upon you you know what i mean like i your friend needs your support right now of course and you're an amazing amazing friend i would be terrified in this situation but at the same time like i would never want you to get hurt and oh my gosh that is so scary if you guys have any 
any suggestions for Wendy, leave them in the comments below. Okay, this next one is another short story and it actually comes with a photo. This one is from Katie. When I lived in my mom's house, my mom, my mom's friend, her daughter and I were in the kitchen sitting and talking. The basement door is in the kitchen. I was sitting right in front of the basement door. While we were all talking, we heard a knocking noise on the door. We all stopped talking and questioned if we had all heard it. We ignore it and say it was nothing. A few moments later, we hear another knocking noise. Me and my mom decide to go downstairs and see what it is. As we go down the stairs, we see a shadow-like figure turn the corner into the rest of the basement. My mom hurried down the stairs and looked into the rest of the basement to see who was there, but there was no one. We walked to the mid of the basement and looked at the wall and there were these two handprints. They weren't there when I did the laundry earlier. And then she sent this of these two handprints on the wall. Ooh, that just looking at that photo after reading your whole story because initially I had just seen the photo like I skim a lot of these stories just to make sure I don't know that they're real stories or they seem you know like full conclusive stories because I don't want to tell a story and tell a story and tell a story if there's not an ending but just seeing that photo after reading that since chills all come down my body girl I would be really intrigued to know if anything else ever happened with that basement if you ever had any other experiences down there because that is just so freaky especially when you know you didn't see those handprints earlier they just kind of like manifested there oh super weird this one is from emily and it is called the mystery man according to the title of the email this is a real story among with other scary slash spooky stories ever since i moved to a new town when i was three years old my mom and i moved to a small town near the seaside we moved to a small house, but we moved after to a slightly larger house, which I still live in today. When I first started noticing peculiar and quite creepy things happening to me, I was 10 years old. My best friend at the time, we'll call her Rose, and I were going to the local library to get some books. On the way down, there is a large field. In front of this field, there are three long rows of houses. We walked on past the first row, just talking about girly things. Then we started to walk past the second one. And for some reason, I got a bad feeling when we walked past, so I decided to look along the row of houses. There in the middle of the road was a man wearing a black beanie and a long green coat, like the ones in the olden days. As soon as I looked at his face, I could feel the color drain from my own face. His eyes were covered with his hair, but I felt like we made eye contact. Rose and I ran to the middle of the field, which was really stupid, but we were only 10. When we glanced around, my breath escaped my mouth as there was the man at the bottom of the field, just stood there, not moving a muscle. I ran for the library as it would be full of adults and was at the other end of the field. When we got in, Rose looked out the window only to be greeted by his face peering in through the windows. She screamed, which alarmed me, and I started to scream, which made her cry. Some of the librarians came rushing in as they heard us and looked over to the huge window where we were both pointing to see nothing. Rose told them about the man who was just there a split second ago. I had never taken my eyes off of the window where he had just vanished. The librarians claimed we had just imagined the man. But how could we both imagine the same man? Rose's mom came and picked us up as neither one of us wanted to walk back by ourselves, which was smart. We were talking about it when we went to Rose's house on the same night and had both seen the same thing just to prove we weren't faking it. The one feature on the man that terrified us the most was his unnaturally spine-chilling large smile. That was the first time I had ever seen the man before. When I was 12, my best friend, my well, her other best friend, and I, we'll call her Jane, were walking back from her house. We had to go down an alleyway to go to my house. We were laughing, talking about all sorts, and then all of a sudden I got a hair-raising feeling once again. By the way, some of this language feels a little bit strange to me, but I think it's because this author, Emily, I think she is um, from the UK or like somewhere like that, you know what I mean? Once again, my stomach sank to my feet as I remembered it was the same feeling as two years ago. I stopped suddenly, which came as a surprise for Jane. We were almost out of the alleyway, roughly one third left to go. Through this whole alley, there's no little cuts in it. It's just straight. I turn around abruptly and see, oh my God, I have chills, <laughs> and see the exact same man from the field, the one with that abnormally large smile, except that he wasn't smiling. He looked annoyed. Once again, when I looked for his eyes under his hair, he started to, in a way, glide over to us, which startled me, 
as he was just stood there for a split second. I grabbed Jane's arm and we started to speed walk out of the alley. She turned around to see the man charging towards after us and almost legged it away. All I got asked was, how did you know how he was there? Where did he come from? I was worried as he had started to speed up and he was now gliding at a running pace. When she says gliding, does that mean his feet weren't touching the ground? Because I really don't like that. Me and Jane started to run. We lost him for a while, but shortly he reappeared behind some trees. He followed us all across town while me and Jane carried on running, jogging, walking. Eventually, while he disappeared, I explained that Rose and I had saw him in summer two years ago and the librarians were saying we were just imagining it. Then, in the most terrifying sentence I've ever heard her say, Jane said, what if this man only comes once in summer every two years? We sat on a swing near her house talking about what happened that day. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the man at the edge of one of the sand dunes watching us with that unnatural smile, just staring at us. This time, I noticed his smile had gotten bigger and deeper. I couldn't help but let out a small scream, and after that, he vanished. None of this was made up, and this is a true story. Jane and Rose still remember it to this day. Rose and I were just talking about it yesterday, which made me want to share it with you. We haven't told anyone as we don't want people to believe we are crazy, but I've watched your YouTube videos. I'm a huge fan of yours as every one of your videos intrigues me. The scariest part is that it's coming up to summer now and I'm 14 years old. It's been two years. Maybe I'll see him again. If I do, I hope I'm not alone. Thank you for reading my personal scary paranormal stories. I would be absolutely over the moon if I were featured in one of your YouTube videos from Emily. Well, Emily, you are in one of my YouTube videos and thank you for enjoying my videos. That is a bizarre, bizarre story. And it freaks me out for a multitude of reasons. Number one, if this was just like a harmless like town ghost, I feel like other people would have seen him, right? Like that would be like the myth of like the green coat man. I literally have chills thinking about this. Somebody said on Twitter the other day that I should make merch that says I literally have chills and like, sorry. <laughs> but seriously, I would think if it was like, I don't know, something that people saw a lot, like if it was just like the town ghost, I, I don't know, it would be more well known whereas the librarians at your local library were like, you guys are making that up. You know what I mean? I don't know, I just think that's really strange. Uh, obviously this thing has to be like legitimate if you and your friends are seeing it, you can't like all imagine the same thing, right? Like you can't imagine the same features, anything. The second thing was the gliding towards you. Like if this was harmless, I feel like it wouldn't be chasing you like that. You get what I mean? I'm really curious to know if it's happening on the exact same day and why it's happening to you because there has to be like some sort of significance there. I don't know. The fact that something is chasing you specifically every single year on this same day is really weird. I really hope you don't see it again this year. Like I have my fingers crossed. I'm thinking of you, girl. Send me that story for sure if something does happen, but my God, that is freaking terrifying. I don't even know what I would do if I was in your shoes. And it has to be scary with that thought kind of like constantly looming. Um, but very clearly this is something very real. It's like following you and your friends and stuff like that around town. But I just don't get very good vibes from this story whatsoever. It just seems very dark to me and very, very not nice. If I had to give you any advice, it would be that the next time that you see him, say out loud to go away that you don't have time for any of this, that you that you are a being of light and this is a being of not light and you would like it to leave you alone immediately. Don't have any like uncertainty about that either and I would hope that once you tell it leave me alone, it would vanish. I don't know though, girl. I am sending you so much positivity. Just thinking about that, that is so scary. I love you so much. I love all of you guys so much. Thank you to these three amazing girls that sent in their stories. If you guys want more of like me reacting to your paranormal stories, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye.